Today, we're talking about backdoored sports cards once again from Tops and Fanatics because it is another clear-cut example of these guys absolutely crapping the bed. It is quite alarming, as I've talked to you before, because these guys continue to make mistakes and they don't even have all the licenses just yet. And this raises a number of concerns about their ability to sort of operate within this industry because stuff like this is completely unacceptable. Now, as I've talked to you before, there's been a number of backdoored cards that have popped out from Tops in the last 12 months. And this actually relates to that as well. And in fact, also relates to duplicate super refractors, or so it seems. This was brought to my attention via Mario Alejandro on Twitter, who I've mentioned and referenced many, many times, as with Neo cards and comics as well. And you can sort of see that essentially they say that last night it was discovered that one eBay user owned and was selling 12% of all Tops 2023 Bowman draft super refractors. And that set off a few alarm bells initially because you don't expect you know, a person to have multiple, let alone 12% of the population. So that raised a few eyebrows, like I said. And then through a bit more digging, they realized that these look like they were backdoored and they look like they were duplicates for certain players as well. Then Mario goes on to say that considering we have seen both backdoored and double one of one super fractors in 2023 tops products, this is something that Fanatics must address immediately. And I completely agree. Now, if we quickly, quickly click into this video, you can sort of see um, some of the super fractors themselves that are basically listed on these guys' eBay page, which has now been taken down. The cards are no longer there. And the account was DFW Card Shark on um, you know, eBay. And you can sort of see here there is a considerable number of them. And very, very concerning to sort of see this and how like the mistake could be made, you know, in the first place. You've got a few other people showing that, you know, this is the one that was listed on the guy's eBay page, and then you had one listed and sold elsewhere. So obviously it's a duplicate. What is very interesting here that I saw Neo Cards and Comics flag was that. Um, it says one-on-one -on, -one on the front, so we consider this to be the pack-pulled one because this was pack-pulled. Um, and the ones listed on this guy's page do not have the stamps on the front or the stamps are on the back, which is not how it's meant to be for Super Fractors. Um, the way Neo Cards and Comics explained it and the way I read about it online myself is that when you have an autographed card, the serial number is on the back. When the card is not an autographed card and it's serial numbered, the serial number goes on the front. And that's a clear cut tell that there's something fishy happening with all the ones that this guy had listed on his eBay store because all the serial numbers were on the back when they should be on the front. So this raises a few questions around, okay, well, what, what actually went down? Were these meant to make it out to the public? How do they make it out into the public? Is this another clear cut example of Tops doing something wrong? Is this the case of somebody faking these cards? Now, I think straight off the bat, it's fairly safe to say that these are probably not fakes because they seem to be of very, very high quality. And it would be odd to sort of have um, that many fakes to that quality be turned around so damn quickly. It looks like these cards were legitimately printed by Tops and somehow made it out into the public. I.e. what we saw five, six months ago when we spoke about these videos over here where you had Bowman Chrome and, or Bowman I think it was 2023 and Tops Chrome 2023, where a number of cards were backdoored and we spoke about it in four or five videos because more and more information kept coming to light. and. You can sort of see that over here where I talked about initially these cars getting backdoored six months before the release of the product, which was quite concerning. It was then made even more concerning because it turns out that some of these players weren't showing up in the product. People were basically tracking this sort of stuff and didn't see any of these stolen cards basically show up within the product, which you know, means that Tops didn't replace them in the end, or so it seems, right? And that raised a heck of a lot of questions. We then had more information come to light where some of these real ones started to show up for certain parallels, but then the ones that were apparently stolen had different autographs on there, as you can sort of see over here, and ended up being confirmed fake by the athlete themselves who looked at it and said, I didn't sign this card, that's not my autograph. And because of the situation where these cards were stolen unsigned and the back of the card said that tops stand by the autograph, they guarantee the autograph, somebody put a fake signature on there, sent it off to a grader, BGS and PSA. They graded them because they rely on the guarantee from the card manufacturer, meanwhile, Somebody's now bought this with a fake auto confirmed by the athlete, and it's just a complete messy situation. And more and more of these continue to keep popping up, and Tops remained silent on that. I'm going to get to my thoughts on that in a second because you know I copped a lot of heat for talking about this so much. But when you're looking at this news today of this guy basically owning 12% of these cards that very much look like they were backdoored, it's like, well, this is the reason why I talked about it because six months later it looks like the same mistake has happened again, and they've still remained silent on the whole situation. It's just it's completely unacceptable, especially when you factor in the fact that they've only really got baseball right now. Once they get WWE on hand, they start doing football, they start doing basketball. What do you think is going to happen? They're basically struggling with just one real card release, which is the Bowman, sorry, which is the baseball stuff. 
it's very concerning about what's to come, in my opinion. Tiffany Cards basically talked about that this one was sold from that guy's page. Same seller again with the serial number not on the front of the card. It's on the back, as you can see over here, which it's not meant to be. This card sold for $1,325. So it is either a duplicate or a backdoor card that somebody has paid for a heck of a lot of money. It's not genuine and it wasn't meant to be made out available into the public, which is obviously a big bloody problem, right? You can't sort of have that out there because it diminishes the trust within your product. And you've got people out there that are sort of buying into this stuff, buying these cards, as Tiffany explains over here, this person paid 1300 bucks for it. Now, all of a sudden they've paid for something that has a duplicate out there. They're going to find it really difficult to sell that in the future if they intend to sell it, right? And, you know, yes, as a buyer, you need to take some onus on yourself, right? But one of the things you sort of take comfort in that you can sort of trust within the process is that these manufacturers should be doing what they're meant to be doing, right? And when they're making one of ones, they should only be one of ones. And yes, we've talked about these issues, you know, a number of times over the last 12 months. So people should still be a little bit uneasy when they're heading into buying this sort of stuff, right? But again, you cannot excuse tops for making that mistake. And it's just a very alarming one that very much looks like it's come from their printing facility. And when I say their printing facility, tops own the printing facilities which is a big thing to call out because it means this error essentially occurred on their watch, right? And that's not something that can be shied away from, right? They own the printing facility. So how does this mistake happen, Tops? Fanatics, you need to give us some insight as to what your process looks like. How do these things get through your door? And you can't remain silent on this because, you know, six months ago you did that, but that's a huge issue as well. And there's also a big problem with these things where it also looks like the cards didn't make it into the packs for those for those years. So if you're going to come back and comment on these ones, give us an update on this crap because you ignored it then. People gave me shit for talking about it so much six months ago. Well, look, guys, this is what happens when you sort of let things slide. I don't care if we know that these guys have issues. I don't care if it's common knowledge they print duplicates, right? Or they, you know, backdoor cards every now and then. I don't care if that's common knowledge. We need to consistently talk about it to hold these guys accountable so they stop doing this kind of bullshit, right? And it's sort of good to see that you know, on Twitter through Mario's post and you've got Neo Cards and Comics talking about it. I saw Dustin did a video. You've got a bunch more people now flagging this kind of crap that hopefully it pressures them into giving us a response like it did with those duplicate one-of-ones because it's not okay that this can happen. And, and like I talked to a little bit earlier, they've made so many mistakes since they've come on board for buying all the licenses. They're not even producing all the cards yet and they're still making these kinds of errors. Panini made lots of mistakes, but Panini had so many more licenses and they're printing so much, right? These guys really only have one or two licenses under their control from a mainstream perspective and they're still shitting the bed the way that they are. That's not that's not filling me with a whole lot of confidence down the line. There's a lot of things that I'm excited about from Tops and Fanatics, but stuff like this make me very bloody concerned. And yes, you know, the printing facility is also printing cards for Panini. So the volume is there, right, for this kind of error to occur. And I'm going back to when I said they've only really got one or two licenses. But that shouldn't be an excuse for Tops or Fanatics either because they're meant to be disruptors. They're meant to be innovators. They should have come in when they acquired the printer, those, those facilities, and put some things in place to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen. So we're meant to be okay that Tops have bought this printing facility and they want to uplift the industry, but this printing facility is still making the same mistakes as they did before the acquisition. Like that doesn't, that doesn't slide for me. And to make the whole situation even more interesting, it looks like this seller also had a stack of Panini green prisms and black prisms also listed. And it very much looks like these were backdoored as well. So there's a stack here that are, you know, black prisms from 21, 22 select courtside and the green prisms and the die cut greens as well, as you can sort of see in this post over here. So, you know, if it has been backdoored from the printing facility, it looks like very much these ones from Panini were as well. Now it's a bit hard to confirm this at this stage, but it's something that's worth keeping front of mind. And, you know, my points go to Panini as well. If these in fact were backdoored, the same point stand that I just referenced for Tops and Fanatics go for you as well. We need to understand what the heck has gone on here because it very much looks like that, you know, this printing facility is letting cards out the back door and it's one that it has to be looked into. I want to sort of reiterate this again because it's one that has sort of been brushed aside. I just went on a mini rant, but we need to be flagging this kind of crap. Anybody that tells you, as I've said for the last two to three years, anybody that tells you to stop talking about something because we already know it, it's common sense, or to stop talking about it because what's it going to do? Well, you know, I'd rather talk about it and fall on deaf ears and, you know, not talk about it at all. And, and this stuff continues, right? On the chance that me saying something can help put pressure on these businesses to, you know, turn things around and actually be held accountable for the things that they say they're meant to be doing. 
this is just absolutely wild, the fact that this has happened again, right? These very much look like they were backdoored. And I'm very concerned because the ones that we spoke about six months ago, they've remained silent on. So it doesn't fill me with a whole lot of confidence about where the hobby's heading. I know I've already said that within this video, but it's just like, where, where does that trust come from for Tops and Fnatic? Because if they're cherry picking on what exactly they want to comment on, um, that's not a good position to be in long term, especially when they're going to have that stranglehold you know, over the market like many you know, think they will. Or it's pretty obvious they're going to have one, right? Because they have that monopoly. But you know, the stranglehold in the sense that they're basically going to rule the hobby with an iron fist as opposed to sort of working together with local card shops, working together with collectors, with investors to try and make everybody happy, right? To find that happy medium, right? If they're sitting back and ignoring this kind of crap or not going to comment on it, that's, that's not good. And stuff like this can make the hobby spiral pretty quickly when it comes to, you know, down markets and where the economy is sort of heading, right? People don't need an excuse in 2023 and 2024 and beyond to not buy sports cards because you've got interest rates and cash rates going crazy. Inflation is going crazy. Unemployment is pretty wild in many places around the world. So people don't need an excuse to not feel comfortable spending their money on sports cards because, you know, discretionary spending stops when, you know, <laughs> the, the, the difficult times come, right? And we're sort of heading towards that. And it's just one that sort of leaves me at a loss for words when this stuff consistently happens. And I spoke about this six months ago, the same freaking things I was saying now I said back then and people shut me down for that kind of stuff. They basically said, give them some time, give them some trust. It's going to get better and all this kind of thing. It's just repeating itself consistently. It's like, guys, where's the improvement going to come? So please share your thoughts down in the comments below. I don't think there was anything else I wanted to share on this topic. It's just a very disappointing one. I'm not surprised, but um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.